Welcome. In this video, I would like to return to a topic that I have addressed previously, and that is the use of Zotero to collect bibliographic data and Adobe PDF files that are acquired from Google Scholar. I chose to use Google Scholar rather than a university database because I'm not confident that the databases to which I have access will look sufficiently similar to the ones that you have access to. So I'm going to demonstrate using Zotero with Google Scholar because we all have access to Google Scholar. Here I've opened the scholar.google.com web page in Firefox. In the background on my MacBook Pro, I'm also running Zotero. Now, the functions that I demonstrate in this video will be applicable regardless of whether I were using a Microsoft Windows computer or a Mac computer. Some of the toolbar icons may appear slightly different on a Windows computer or may appear different if using the Chrome, Safari, uh, web browsers, but the functionality is the same. So I want to return to the search that I did in a previous, ver uh, previous video, and I'll search for data security. Now, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I added this Denning and Denning article. Let me zoom in a bit for you. This Denning and Denning article, I already added that to my Zotero database. Now I want to add another entry into the Zotero database and I'm going to show you where sometimes problems can occur. So I'll select this Kaufman article. When I click on it, I can see the abstract. And if I scroll down, I can see some additional bibliographic information. I know when it was published. I have access to the DOI, the Digital Object Identifier. But now I'm going to use the button I've installed in Firefox that integrates Firefox with Zotero. And this data is added to my one of my notebooks in Zotero. So if I flip over to Zotero, you'll see that this entry for data security in the world of cloud computing has been entered. Now I got to remember, because I'm preparing to write my paper in APA style, I need to change the capitalization of the article's title. So I'll change the title of the article by right clicking and choosing sentence case. And now only the first letter is capitalized. If there were principal words, or if there were a subtitle, I would have to manually change the capitalization of the necessary letters. I want to point out a problem, though. While all the bibliographic data for this article has been captured into Zotero, a copy of the PDF file was not captured. And I can tell that because immediately to the left of the title of the article, there is no arrow key. Now, these other articles, if I drop the arrow down, I can see that there are PDF files attached with two of them. But I need the whole PDF file for this article so I can read the full thing. This is a trick that we have to remember. When I go back to 
the interface with um, on the IEEE.org website from which I captured the bibliographic data. If I click the option to download the PDF, I have to have some authorization to access this data. But I noticed something when I was using Google Scholar. So if I return to Google Scholar, I can see that a copy of the PDF is available to me through Google rather than having to go through the authorized process of the uh, publisher. So if I open this, here's a copy of the article. I can then download it to my computer. I'm going to save it in my downloads folder and the name is just CLO. What the name is, I don't care at the moment. And then looking at Zotero, I can add that PDF into my Zotero database and have it connected with its complementary bibliographic information. So I make sure I'm I've clicked on the name of the article in Zotero. I attach a stored copy of the file by clicking this attach button, a little paper clip. And then I attach the CLO PDF file. And now the PDF file is associated with the bibliographic information and I can open it right here from my computer without having to need access to the internet. So in reading this document, I learned something interesting that, that will help me in the arguments that I wish to present in my paper. I'm looking here in the second column in this paragraph This is something I didn't know before. I didn't know that the term cloud originates from the 1990s when telecommunications providers began offering virtual private networking services. Now, VPN, I understand, but I didn't realize that the word cloud was really associated with VPNs. So I want to introduce that information into my APA style paper. So here in Microsoft Word, I'm in my next paragraph, I want to include that information about the term cloud having come from virtual private networking services. So I can type the term cloud was originally identified by virtual private networking services or companies in the 1990s. Now I need to cite the article. So Looking back at Zotero, I can see the article was written by Kaufman, and the title is Data Security in the World of Cloud Computing. So I'm going to first try searching for Kaufman. So here in Microsoft Word, I click my Zotero menu option, click Add or Edit a Citation, and I'll type Kaufman. and my Zotero search finds two entries. The first one is the one I want, data security in the world of cloud computing. So I click it, press enter, the citation is added, and then I press the period to end my sentence. Now if I look at my references list, you can see that Kaufman 
was added to the references list in its correct alphabetic place comes between Borden's and National. So the B of Borden's, K of Kaufman, N of National is alphabetically ordered. And in reviewing this reference entry, it has the Kaufman's name, surname, first initial, middle initial, year of publication, period, data security in the world of cloud computing, IEEE security privacy, volume 7, issue 4, pages 61 to 64, and the DOI. So it is a, uh, from a content and formatting perspective, it is an accurate APA style reference entry to complement this citation. I hope you found this demonstration helpful. I frequently use Google Scholar when conducting research because I can get in and out of Google Scholar faster than I can if I were to log into my university's databases. Now, I'm not discounting the value of using professionally curated academic databases, but sometimes we can find information that we need in Google Scholar more quickly than we could if we were to use our institutional databases. The problem with Google Scholar, though, is that while we can often capture the bibliographic data for articles that are listed in Google Scholar, we can't sometimes capture the PDF file. And that's why in looking at Google Scholar, I chose that article because I could see that the PDF file for the article would be accessible to me. And I don't want to read and trust information solely from an abstract. I want to read the whole paper and make sure I understand the expert's arguments before I cite that expert in one of my own papers. In future videos, I'll address some more nuances of using Zotero, Google Scholar, and eventually I'll also start addressing using professionally curated academic databases. In the meantime, I wish you very happy academic writing.